Okay, we talked then about these ligand gated ion channels which will respond to typically neurotransmitters but also other types of stimuli such as stretch, uh, mechanical pressure, acid, and various other types of compounds that can be found in the extracellular fluid or the external environment. The next type of channels I want to talk to you about are what we call leak channels and let's look at those. We're going to start out with a leak channel here and let me diagram it in. We'll create a little area right here for it. And this first leak channel that I'm going to talk about is going to be a potassium leak channel. Leak channels are selective. They are specific for what molecule can actually get into them and what molecule can actually pass through them. So the ion channel that I've drawn in green, we're going to say that this is my potassium leak channel. Now the thing about leak channels is they're not really gated and by gated I mean the opening and closing is controlled. These actually open and close at random intervals. Most of the videos that you're going to see will simplify it and simply say that they're open all the time, which is not quite true. Any individual channel has a probability of being opened or closed based on the properties of the channel. But the reality is that at any given time, at least some of these channels that are present in the cell membrane are going to be open. And as a consequence, this particular channel will allow for the ion potassium, which happens to be concentrated in the intracellular fluid. More about that later. It allows the ion, the ion potassium to escape into the extracellular fluid. And so our potassium leak channel provides that pathway. Now we also will have for us these other channels. And here we're going to draw in purple, we're going to make this one a sodium leak channel. And like the potassium leak channel, it has a probability of being opened and closed and it's going to drift open, it's going to drift closed, and it's a little bit random, but at any given time there's going to be at least some of these leak channels open. And these leak channels will allow, in this case, instead of potassium, these are going to allow sodium to leak into my cell. You'll find these type of channels in every cell, virtually every cell of the body, as far as I know, every cell, but perhaps there might be some where they don't exist. And at least in neurons and in many cells, what you actually will see, if we were to just count up all of the numbers of different channels, you're going to see that the potassium leak channels outnumber the sodium leak channels by about 10 to 1 or 9 to 1. Okay. So for every 10 potassium channels, we'd have one sodium leak channel. And why that is relevant, that's going to become more relevant and the relevance will become more clear when we revisit this idea of resting membrane potential. For now, I just want you to tuck that away in your brain and know that potassium uh, channels, potassium leak channels are much more abundant. And so we tend to get more potassium leaking out and less sodium leaking in. Now that said, I want to remind you about some of those co-transporters and that sodium is commonly used for co-transport. And in those situations, we would have more sodium coming in th via those co-transporters. But those co-transporters are something different than leak channels. And so in terms of just the leak channels, the potassium channels outnumber the sodium channels. There are other type of leak channels that come into play. There's chloride leak channels. And we can go ahead and throw in just a token chloride leak channel if we would like. And we can look at that. Um, I tend, when I'm teaching this level of physiology, I tend to more or less ignore um, these chloride leak channels just to simplify, really. But it is important to notice and, and pay attention and say, oh, yeah, ha these guys are here, too. And now the chloride channels, it just so happens that chloride is concentrated in the extracellular fluid. And so chloride is a negatively charged ion, chloride negative, and it's going to leak into my cell. Okay. And that's the gist. So we've seen the ligand gated channels, we've seen the leak channels. Let me introduce the last channel to you 
in the next video.